So we say we're going to focus on our plane wave solution. The plane wave is more or less kind of like your 1D case in a 3D world. In the sense that in the 3D world, we have our x, y, and z. But the assumption here is that the electric field intensity only depends on x and t, of course. Um, and that it is only in the y direction. So what that kind of looks like is for any given x, we have a certain electric field in the y direction. And then all along that same x, no matter what the y and the z is, they have the same magnitude of electric field. So you have these parallel yz planes in which the um, electric field is the same. And so you have plane after plane after plane and these are all parallel and they within each plane they all have the same electric field. Now further we make the assumption that the magnetic field is doing kind of the same thing except that the magnetic field only acts in the z direction. So you end up with more or less a picture that looks like you have your x kind of look like that and then and your magnetic field kind of comes in and out kind of like that. Now I'm kind of sketching out what the solution we already know but kind of the description of the transverse plane wave. All right but let's see how this kind of setting creates our wave equation. And to do that, we have to establish that the condition here conforms to the to each of the four Maxwell's equation. So first, the easier ones, which is your Gauss's law, that says the spatial derivative of dA has to be zero, and then the spatial derivative of bn dA has to be equal to zero, zero, because we're in a vacuum, so then we can't possibly enclose any charge. And that also works because for any given volume that we can draw here, all the electric field that comes in the bottom it's equal to all the electric field coming out the top because for any given plane the electric field on the bottom is the same as the ones on top so as they all add up you will get the sum of the electric flux through this Gaussian surface to be zero same thing for the magnetic field because they all go in this way so you have these guys are the same coming in going out and on the other side you have or a different slice further along you have all the same coming in and coming out so it conforms to the uh, to Gauss's law yay so next up we have Faraday's law Faraday's law tells us to draw a loop and integrate around that loop to get us the change in the time change in our magnetic flux so the dA. Alright, so to look at that, let's draw the x and the y as such. We have the electric field that might have different value along the x, but they would have the same along different y's. And we draw a loop uh, more or less like this. And we're going to integrate around like that. On this side, we call that x1, the width, delta x, so this must be x1 plus delta x, and then the height of delta y. That's the area of the loop we're drawing. As we integrate around, the two horizontal sections not going to get anything because of the dot product here. We're not going to get any contribution to the integral because the field is perpendicular to those two sides. On this on these two sides then we have positive e x1 plus delta x 
times delta y because they're in the same direction. On the other side, they're in a different direction, so we have a minus going on. As delta x gets small, these differences can be approximated then, of course, by the partial derivative. You do notice we do that a lot. So then we have this going on. On the other side, we have we still have this, but as the delta x gets small, you get a thin little sliver for the magnetic field. So the ma at any given time, the magnetic field should be constant. So then we can take the dB dtl, the integral, with the magnetic field, of course, always perpendicular to our um, loop. So that just becomes A which is delta x delta y. And then that of course cancels out with that. And we end up with our first lovely equation. Which relates a spatial change of the electric field with the temporal change in the magnetic field. As we've alluded to a little earlier. Lastly, we have Ampere's law, which tells us also to draw a loop, but this time to, win, to walk along some magnetic field, um, and whatever current we enclose, plus any change in electric field that we enclose, also comes into play. And this time we're going to be drawing, we'll draw in the z direction, so we have electric I'm sorry, magnetic field that goes this way, which might be different sizes for various different x. And then we'll draw a loop once again, but this time in the exact plane, so that we're walking along. Very similar argument here. Uh, this is still delta x. We still got x1. We still got x1 plus delta x. And this is delta z this time. Very, very similar argument goes. Um, we have no current because once again, we're in vacuum. So we're not enclosing any current. And this integral here is once again, the B is x1 plus delta x times delta z minus B at x1 times delta z, which once again equals di B di x, delta x, delta z, and the other side what we're left with is mu naught, epsilon naught. Um, same thing as delta x gets small, e is constant at any given time, so di negative di di t times delta x delta z, which is the size of our area. That goes away, and we're left with how changing Magnetic field in space gives you changing magnetic field in time. So putting that all together now, we not only are able to satisfy the two Gauss's law of um, electric and magnetic field no, using our planar configuration for the electric and magnetic field, and to conform to the other two Maxwell's equation, which is for our days and Ampere's law, we end up with these two things. You can kind of appreciate how they are somewhat similar and there's a lot of parallelism going on. Now to combine them together, I will take one side to relate to the other one, I have to take the spatial derivative again. So here I have, let me get the second derivative in space, starting off familiar now I hope, equals negative di di x di b di t but because x and t is independent, I can swap them up. So that's going to be negative di di t of di b di x, which becomes this mess. So the second derivative in E is equal to negative. These constants can, of course, come out. And the negative negative cancel out here. Di, di t of di e di t, so we have a second time derivative.
Aha! Double spatial derivative, double time to temporal derivative. Bam! Wave equation. And to rearrange this a little bit to the form that we like a little more, we have 1 over u naught e naught square di square, oops, di t square. And this is going to be your phase velocity square. And when Maxwell actually worked out the number, as you can as well, you find that this 1 over square root of mu naught e naught is very what's actually exactly the speed of light and that's why he was so confident that electromagnetic field describes light similarly we can do a the exact same thing but for the magnetic field going through the same process we'll take this spatial derivative again of this equation now so say c is equal to Di, di x of negative mu naught e naught di e di t swapping that up will give you di di t constant I guess I can put that outside too of di e di x hopefully getting us positive u e naught Di square, di t square of b. Once again, spatial derivative, spatial double derivative equals spatial temporal derivative. You swap that over, and you realize that the magnetic component also travels along at the same speed. From all this, Maxwell concluded the electrical and magnetic wave. Sorry, the fields, they travel together forming these waves and it is because the changing electric field gives you changing magnetic field and that the changing magnetic field gets you changing electric field back that they come together and they make a propagating electromagnetic wave which is very stable over long period of space. We'll look at the solutions a bit more later on but here we're really quickly looking at how um, the four Maxwell's equations conform to this kind of planar wave description and this planar wave description has to work has to give you this kind of wave equation so therefore we have an electromagnetic wave with this speed even without solving the, the equation so we can find the speed very quickly as soon as we construct the wave equation